Good morning to all of you out there in the virtual world. I'm Jim Hinkle. I've been a master gardener since 2009. But today we're going to talk about orchids and that game came into my life 15 to 20 years ago when I was a volunteer at the Atlanta Botanical Garden working with the staff down there. I began to learn a lot about orchids, Becky Brinkman, Ron Dieterman. And then my greenhouse at home, which is 12 by 14, started accumulating orchid plants. I've been accused of never throwing anything away. That's not true. But I bring the orchids in in the winter time, right about now, and then take them out in the springtime, hang them on a large magnolia tree. So I've got summer and winter orchid plants. I got fascinated the more I read about the orchids. I uh, went online to read some things. I talked to orchid growers where I got a lot of information. And a very simple book has meant a lot to me. It's called 100 Orchids for the American Gardener. I've learned a whole lot of this little book. So moving on, let's talk about orchids. Orchid growing is not an exact science. As my friend Sarah Henderson says, she says it's like cooking. Each person has their own flair as to what to put into a recipe. So I've developed some techniques that I found successful in growing orchids. Uh, and that's what I'm here to tell you about today is how I've found success with orchids. What are orchids? They are not parasites, but they might be epiphytes, which means that they live off the air and they need a moist moving air around their roots. They need uh, a growing medium that will sustain moisture. Or they might be terrestrials, which means they're growing in the ground. Or they might be lithophytes, which means they might attach to rock surfaces and get their sustenance from the atmosphere and the rain that washes over the roots. There are two basic growth habits of orchids. Let's talk about the monopodials. Monopodia is one main stem with flowering stalks appearing at, on the main stem. This would be a monopodial orchid with flowers off the spikes growing out of the leaves. In nature, the roots will clasp onto a tree trunk, perhaps. They do not have what's known as a pseudobulb, so therefore they're going to need constant moisture year round. The other type of orchid would be sympodial. <clears throat> and when I'm talking about sympodial, I mean cattleyas, dendrobians, oncidiums, one of these, perhaps. <clears throat> and the roots. The orchid grows horizontally across the pot, and I'll show you this cattleya, how it grows horizontally across the pot. And you can see there is a swelling at the base of each stem. That's called the pseudobulb, which holds water in there and supplies moisture to the orchid plant. <clears throat> There's another type of terrestrial sympodial, which is known as the slipper orchid or the pathiopedilum, and it grows in the ground and it has a main stalk. Uh, it requires a lot of moisture, so the planting medium for this is a little different from the others, and we'll talk about that later. <clears throat> Function of orchid plants is to reproduce. The beautiful flowers are very nice, but they are of no consequence to the plant itself. The orchid plant produces flowers resembling the pollinator it needs to attract. Orchids grow all over the world. Get this, swamp to the desert, tropics to the tundra. That's pretty amazing. 
Basically, orchids survive on neglect. They're easy to kill by overwatering. So that's why air circulation and humidity are important, but not actual water. Don't, don't let them sit in water. Too little fertilizer is better than too much, but they basically require feedings every two days, every two weeks. When misting, <clears throat> beware that droplets do not stay on the flowers because they will cause spotting the flowers. And when you're misting, you use a spray bottle such as this. This one happens to have orchid fertilizer in it. So you're spraying the base of the plant where the roots come out of the base of the plant. <clears throat> as I said before, never let the plant sit in water. And when you do feed, I found this orchid preparation, which is reconstituted in this bottle. It's a, it's a, a powder. It's called Premium Orchid Food Grow More is the name of it. And it works quite well. But when you feed orchids, make sure you water them first, let the water flow through the pot, then add the, the fertilizer spray so you don't burn the roots. <clears throat> Light, 75% of the orchids like medium light. Hot sun will burn them. And you notice I have all these orchids sitting here today, not in the hot sun. Filtered bright light is the best. When you purchase an orchid, whether you're at the supermarket or at a nursery or orchid grower, make sure you read the tag, which has the information in it as to the temperature it needs, the light, the watering, and the fertilizing. Very informative are these tags on the, on the plants. Orchids are disease prone, unfortunately. One of the big things that happens, for instance, in a greenhouse, is the virus can spread from plant to plant. And once it starts, it's very difficult to, to get rid of it. When you do work with an orchid plant and you need to trim off dead leaves or trim dead roots, use a razor blade to trim things off, but use one razor blade per plant. In other words, I've got five plants here. I need to use five different razor blades. The other disease in my greenhouse are mealybugs. Oh boy, they have a great time. And the more moisture in the air, it seems like the mealybugs just multiply. What I have found the best for mealybugs is something called neem oil, a spray. It's an organic spray and it's a, a fungicide. By spraying it on the leaves, especially underneath the leaves, it will take care of mealybugs. However, a word of caution, if you give a second dose of neem oil and you've still got mealybugs, out the door. You're not gonna get rid of them. They just keep multiplying like crazy in there. And then of course, too much water or too much sun is the third problem the orchids can find. All right, we're gonna talk about five genera of orchids today. I've got five different plants to show you, starting off with Cattleya. Unfortunately, I was not able to find a Cattleya in bloom anywhere in Atlanta or from any of the growers, but just think about Grandma's Corsage. That's the flower of the Cattleya. The pseudobulb, it grows horizontally, uh, the Cattleyas are from Central or South America. There are 45 to 50 species. They're epiphytic, sympodial. They do have the pseudobulb, as I said. It needs bright light and let it dry out between the waterings. You repot a Cattleya when the orchid medium has deteriorated or the roots are growing out of the pot 
and need to be contained in a larger pot. Next thing we're gonna talk about are Phalaenopsis. This is the easiest to grow and you see it everywhere in the nurseries, hundreds of them. This is the single stem. And when you're looking at, to buy a Phalaenopsis, think about buying one with double spikes like this and think about buying one that has buds on the end that will open. You're gonna pay some money for these plants. So you might as well make them last longer and allow some buds to open up. These two buds here just opened yesterday. The Phalaenopsis is native to India, Southeastern Asia, the Philippines, Australia. There are about 46 different species. Epiphytic, as I said, bright light, no strong sun, and then repot soon here, because these roots are coming out of this plant. It's gonna need a bigger pot. It's, it's in a nursery bought pot right now. It needs to be into a regular orchid pot of a little bigger size. Some people say never, repot an orchid that is in bloom. Some people say you can repot a Phalaenopsis when it's in bloom. I have repotted Phalaenopsis in bloom and they've lived. <laughs> so once again, it's uh, my way of doing things. Oncidium, another type of orchid. This one, an example of this is an oncidium that has a spike with flowers growing up the spike. It has a pseudobulb. This oncidium is in a nursery pot. I will be good about it and wait till the blooms are finished. Then I'm gonna pot it up into a larger orchid pot. Oncidiums are indigenous to Central and South America. There are probably 420 different species. Oftentimes they'll grow on trees or mossy surfaces, surfaces or on rocks. Oncidium needs about two hours of sun at least. It can take more, but once again, not hot burning sun. And then repot when, the, when it's outgrown the pot or the medium has decomposed and this nursery bought oncidium is in a mossy, medium that needs to be replaced once the bloom is finished. We'll talk about repotting in a little bit. I have some demonstrations for you. Then there's the dendrobium. This guy is a dendrobium who is leaning over and I've got him anchored with an anchor post. Southeastern Asia and Australia is where you find them. Get this, 1,000 species of dendrobians are in existence. They grow on trees, rocks, or sometimes in the ground. And it's got a tall pseudobulb, this, this being pseudobulb here. Notice these leaves come out, stepping up on a long stem. Then the spike goes out through the top. Growing conditions can be cold to warm, humid, shade to full sun. Do not add sphagnum moss when you repot these, and we'll talk about that in a minute. They do not like a lot of moisture in the pot. So the orchid medium itself without sphagnum moss is what they like the best. My last example is something, something called the Lady slipper orchid, Paphio pedulum is the real name for it. And you can see this looks like a lady slipper. <laughs> Once again, you repot when the medium breaks down, put it in a larger pot. This pouch 
on the lady slipper orchid attracts pollinators. It can go from shade to bright light. It is a terrestrial orchid. It grows in the ground. And this one likes to stay moist all the time. Do not let this one dry out. Well, let's talk about repotting. An orchid pot looks like this. Notice the holes on the side as well as one in the bottom. This allows water to drain out, not pool in the pot. The roots many times will come out through these holes. And when the roots are coming out, they're seeking moist humid air. And when you're feeding them with this kind of solution, spray this food onto the roots and that's how they absorb their nutrients. Usually when you're repotting an orchid, you wanna to go to a larger pot. Now, what you're gonna see here are nursery bought orchid plants in these small plastic pots. I'm very anxious to get them out of these little pots. They need something bigger. They're, they're just jammed in there. Uh, this one I'll get repotted and I'll show you how to repot in just a second with another one. So what we're gonna do at this time, I'm gonna show you how to repot a Phalaenopsis that came from a nursery. Don't tell anybody it's got blooms on it, but I'm gonna repot it. This is one that you can get away with repotting. Comes in this cute little vase right off. I think this was maybe from one of the supermarkets. Somebody gave it to my wife and myself. I've had it in my house now for oh, a month or more and it's survived, but it's kind of cramped as to where it's living here. And I need to do something about that. So as you see this poor little guy in a plastic cup, I mean, he's just dying to get out of there. So what I'm gonna do is take it out of the pot Throw this away. This is soaking wet. Sphagnum moss is just way too wet. I need to tease the moss off the roots of the plant with not tearing the roots themselves. Try to unleash all these wound up roots. And then what we're gonna do I'm gonna take this plant and pot it up into a larger pot and let it grow more. You can see how bound this is. And the more I tease this moss off, the freer the roots become. So what I'm gonna do is take a pot I think I'll use this one. This looks good. Set this down for a minute. Now, I've got some orchid medium that I got from one of the orchid growers up in Woodstock. And what I'm going to do is mix some of the dry orchid medium Dry orchid medium being this bark. I'm gonna add some sphagnum moss to it and wet it down. Because the Phalaenopsis likes to have some moisture around it. I'm gonna put some water on the, the medium. Make sure you get that moss soaked. Then layer it in the orchid pot. Need a little more dry in here. 
Then I'm going to take the plant, seed it in the pot, try to clean it off the best you can. Matter of fact, if I had a spray hose, I would spray these roots to get a lot of this off. I'm just going to dunk it here, see if I can get some of the extra moss off. I'm going to seed it in the pot like this, and then pack around the base of the plant with your orchid medium and use these anchors to hold it up. So now this guy can breathe a little better. He's into a bigger pot, room to grow, not suffocating in one of those little plastic cups. I'm not sure why all orchids in nurseries and supermarkets are sold in those cups, probably because they're easier to transport in that small cup, but uh, not suitable for long-term living. Jim, we have two questions for you. Uh, can, you hold off for, can you hold off for a second until I finish this? Yeah, I'll get you. Um, once again, if you're gonna trim anything off an orchid plant when you're repotting in the way of a root, use a sterile razor or a new razor blade, one per plant. Let's talk about the growing mediums that are available. There is one that Better Grow makes, they call it orchid bark. This preparation is basically bark chips. And I like to add the sphagnum moss to keep moisture in there, letting it drain through the pot. Then there is another preparation from Better Grow that has four different ingredients in it, each serving a different purpose. You've got um, chunky peat, which is those wood chips. You've got um, fir bark. The chunky peat keeps the moisture. The fir bark allows air circulation. This has charcoal in it, and that is for cleansing purposes. And then they add perlite, the white perlite, and that facilitates better drainage. The medium that I got from my orchid grower up in Woodstock is pure dark chips. And I added the sphagnum moss to get some moisture in there. If you are going to repot a dendrobium, this guy, they do not like a lot of moisture, so don't put any sphagnum moss in there. All right. Um, most epiphytes, like the bark with the perlite and the charcoal and the, spag and the sphagnum moss, the, the terrestrials, like this slipper orchid, they grow in the ground. They like a lot of sphagnum moss to keep the moisture going on. And then if you're gonna do seedlings and finely fine-rooted orchids, they like a very fine bark, minuscule wood chips. Now, Kathy. I'm ready for some questions. Okay. Uh, Carolyn wanted to know if you could repeat again where you get your medium from Woodstock and would that All be right. available to others? Yes. The grower that I use in Woodstock is Peach State Orchids. And they sold me this one gallon bag and they also have 10 gallon bags. This particular preparation, the better grow, you can get it at Lowe's. Um, this one with the four different ingredients with the charcoal and the perlite and the sphagnum moss is difficult to find, but Lowe's does carry it. Not every Lowe's does though. Another question? Yes, and if there are dead roots, should we remove all of them before repotting? If there are roots that look dead, take a razor blade, cut them off where it looks like the root has died. 
And it usually doesn't go all the way back to the main part of the plant. It will just be a root coming out of the pot like this Phalaenopsis has a dead twig on the end. You can take that off. Uh, the rest of the root is good. And another question is, how do you tell if the root is dead? It'll be shriveled. Uh, let me hold this up again. This Phalaenopsis, if you can see this fleshy part of the root is a live part. See the very narrow twig that's coming out of the end of the root? That can be taken off. That, that is not a viable part of the root. It doesn't hurt to leave it on, but if you want to trim it up, you would trim it right there where it starts to shrivel. Now, once again, I'm telling you what works for me. Uh, people will probably have their own opinions about growing orchids. I have a friend who has a winter home on the east coast of Florida. Lots of orchids down there. Oh man, do they have them. She's under the impression that once she takes an orchid out of the house after finished blooming and hangs it on a tree, she can never again bring it back in the house. I don't pay any attention to that. I take them out of the greenhouse. I put them in the house if they're blooming, back to the greenhouse. I hang them on the magnolia tree, in and out, and uh, I'm getting away with it. We have another question from Dagmar. Do you leave any roots out or do you put them all in the pot, the soil medium? Usually when you're repotting, you're not going to get them all in a pot. When I go to pot this up into a bigger pot, I'm not going to get all these roots inside a pot. And the size pot I would go to would be this, because the insert here is a store-bought plastic pot again, a small one. I'll never get all those roots inside this pot so they can hang out. And remember, when you do mist them and feed them, you're misting these roots and feeding these roots. That's how the nutrients are absorbed. Try not to miss the flowers, they do spot. It's been noticed that your pots are all clay pots. Do ceramic pots with holes do the same? And if so, do you know a source of ceramic pots? Ceramic pots are usually glazed. So what you need to be careful of there is you've got plenty of side holes because you don't want water to accumulate inside a glazed pot. Uh, I suppose if you go to a, um, one of the decorative florists, they would probably sell ceramic glazed pots. Um, what I do, my wife wants everything to look pretty, so what I do is take this kind of pot, which is designated orchid pot, but I insert a clay pot inside this and then make it look pretty with that. I don't get away with having these pots sit out in the, in the living room very well, but uh, anyway, uh, I can always, I have a whole collection of these glazed ceramic pots, but I always insert one of these inside it. Another question, Jim, if someone prefers to uh, repot in the plastic pots that come uh, from the planters, is there a source for buying those plastic pots? Well, for instance, Lowe's has all kinds of plastic pots. The only thing you have to be careful when you're doing plastic, it's got to have some side holes to allow drainage. Now, this little guy, that slipper orchid is gonna come out of there one day. It has plenty of holes in the bottom. I don't see too many plastic pots with side holes. Uh, I'm sure they're out there, but um, I just happen to like better to have something that, uh, will not accumulate the water. And if the water does accumulate in a 
clay pot, it'll be absorbed into the clay. So the plant won't be sitting in water. Never let an orchid sit in water. That's the one thing I think others will agree with me. <laughs> Don't let them sit in water. This is another very popular question. Nina asked it first. How do you get the plant to rebloom? <laughs> well, that's probably what got me started on orchid care. All of a sudden, for no good reason, I started having orchids rebloom. I didn't know why. They were usually phalaenopsis, these guys. They're the easiest to grow. But um, once I started having rebloomers, I thought, well, this is interesting. I think I'll just keep on with this. So I've been fortunate in that I have this greenhouse in the winter and I can keep things misted and uh, temperature controlled. And they don't rebloom, but maybe once every couple of years. So it's a slow process and you can't force it. Uh, orchids have a mind of their own and uh, you can talk to them if you want, but it's probably not gonna make any difference because if they wanna take two years to rebloom, that's what they'll take. I wanna show you one more thing before we finish. Um, or two more things. This is an Oncidium I have at my house. It is about finished blooming. And you'll see how the roots are coming out. So it's busting out of this pot. When I get home, I'm gonna trim off parts of the plant over here that are not producing anything. Set this plant upright in the pot. Notice that it's about finished blooming and sort of control some of the roots so that they're not just falling over the edge like this. So I can reseat this plant in the pot. Another thing I'm gonna do, this is a dendrobium that I have, had it for years. Now, I've never gotten this one to rebloom, but if you see, it's making babies like crazy. You got a baby there, got a baby there, got a baby there. So I can take a razor blade, cut this off, not cut the roots, but cut it off and repot it in a pot such as this perhaps, and start over again with new babies. More questions? Yes, we do. Mita would like to know, once the blooms have started to dry up after months of consistent care, then they eventually fall off. How long should I keep up consistent care till I should expect it to bloom again? Well, once again, your blooms are gonna fall off one at a time. If you look at this dendrobium here that is trying to fall over. I've got a bloom up here that's not going to be long for this world. Once they're all gone, take the plant, put it somewhere uh, in a window, somewhere where you can mist it, and give it a couple years and it'll rebloom. Once again, they have a mind of their own, they're going to do it their way. These phalaenopsis are a little easier to handle. We have another question on what do you recommend for a fertilization schedule? What they're saying in most of these instructions and the little pamphlets you get with the orchid, about every two weeks, feed them. I have to admit, I'm not too good about that, but um, they say every one to two weeks, feed them with a what I use is a spray liquid fertilizer. Um, some of the orchids like the Phalaenopsis, you don't want them to dry out. So you need to water them consistently, especially if they're in the house. Don't overwater the dendrobians. Remember I said no sphagnum moss on that. They don't wanna be soaked in water. The slipper orchid, it likes to be wet. Read the little tag. We have another question. Uh, my Phalaenopsis is growing new leaves. However, the new leaf is more narrow and longer. Is there a problem going on? The previous leaf was wider and shorter. 
there may be a problem going on, but you can see this phalaenopsis, that's pretty wide leaf. Uh, if you're getting narrow leaves, maybe it needs some fertilizer. It's hard to tell what's going on when you get narrow leaves. And, and once in a while, these orchids will just up and die on you. But when you do find a diseased orchid out the door, it'll spread. Another question, what if my roots has brown spots? What could that be? Brown spots on the roots? On the root, yes. Uh, well, if you're gonna say brown spots on the bloom, I'd say it's water sat on the bloom too long. On the root, it could be that water sat on the root too long. Um, if you look at these roots here on this phalaenopsis, there are no brown spots on it. But um, I think controlling how long the water stays on the plant is something you need to worry about. Okay, and do you recommend a place to buy orchids? Uh, Caroline went to a greenhouse and when she repotted it, it had a centipede on it. <laughs> well, you know, you know, the, the, the orchid growers have the same problems we all have. They get disease and they get you know, things in there. And all I can tell you is if you're going to purchase an orchid out of a greenhouse or a supermarket, look at the plant. Make sure that you know what's on this plant. You don't want any foreign critters. You don't want one that's beginning to drop its, its blooms. You want one that's gonna have some new blooms and uh, make sure you examine the plant before you purchase it. And that's all the questions that I have right. currently. Rosa has some questions here. Hold on, what do you? You'll have to repeat it. Sometimes the tag says to use ice. Let me get it. Sometimes the tag says to use ice. Do you what? To use ice to water them. Um, Rose is asking uh, about a tag that says to use ice to water the orchid plant. I don't recommend that. I mean, for any plant, I'm not sure you want to put ice on it. Uh, what you're doing is just sort of freezing the roots and put them into shock. I would not recommend using ice. Another question? Um, sometimes the leaves get yellow. Okay, sometimes the leaves on the orchid plants get yellow. Let me show you an example of that. On this slipper orchid, there's one that's dying. Take a razor blade and cut it off. That leaf is gonna not do anything good for the plant and it's ugly, so you can just take it off. And if there's a lot of yellow on the leaves, it may be in need of fertilizer or food. What about using warm water to water them? Room temperature, room temperature water. Rosa's question was, what about using warm water? Uh, now you don't wanna boil the plant or freeze it. You just wanna have room temperature water. And Jim, I have another question for you here. What does okay. it mean when the orchid leaves get soft and floppy? All right, if it's one leaf, um, that's probably a situation where you just need to take the razor blade and cut that leaf off. Look at this one on this Cattleya. It's yellowing. So if I were gonna trim this up right now, I'd probably get rid of that leaf because it's, it's just gonna get yellower. And I would cut back some of these uh, stems that are not gonna produce any flowers. Um, and on the dendrobium that I've got here that I was gonna make the babies out of, it's got some yellowing leaves. I take a razor blade and cut them off right at the stem. Another question, when you have orchids in a decorative pot, is it all right to put loose moss on top of them to hide the roots? Well, what you're seeing here 
and I do this at my house, I use this Spanish moss to put on the top as my wife doesn't like looking at the base of the plant. So this is, comes in a bag, any nursery will sell it. It comes in this tan color or a green color. And I spread it around the top of, of the base of the plant. It does help keep some of the moisture in, but um, it looks better, I guess, than having a bare root situation like that guy. And those are all the questions that I have come across. All right, and Rosa had her two questions. Um, on Facebook, our friends out there in the virtual world can pick this talk up on Facebook, plus see what's coming in the way of more talks. And I think Lee's gonna send out a, a, a link to, to get on the pay, Facebook uh, to see what's coming up. Well, I thank all of you for being out there. And uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you about orchids. Uh, I am certainly not a professional orchid grower, but I have a good time with it. And I think that um, anybody that wants to play with orchids, it's a hit or miss situation. If you don't make it with one plant, maybe the next one will. And once you see one rebloom, oh man, that's the best. Thank all of you for listening to me. It's been great.